Patricia, of course, uh, is born in Soto La Marina, as you can see, it's farther south, and the De Leon family from the northern, slightly more northern Burgos area. But by 1800, Patricia and Martin move to the border, and we do actually have a document in which she gives her entire dowry to her husband in order to found a ranch. And the ranch they find, found is the Santa Margarita Ranch, which is today San Patricio. And it was the crossing of the Nueces River. And so in this case, it became a place where there were many people coming and going all the time. And when we look at this time period, 1800 is when they first found the ranch or when they moved to that area. And this is a period, and one of the things that I would like to recommend to all of you that are genealogists or interested in your genealogical history is for heaven's sakes, consider the history that was going on at the time. And when you look at this history and you consider the children that were born to Patricia literally every two years, 1798 was her eldest son, Maria Candelaria. I won't read all of them to you, but you can see here that there were 10 children that she gave birth to, and all of them survived. The only one who died before she did was Agapito. And unhappily, he was a young man that was killed by, we believe, Mustang Gray, an Anglo who came into the area. Now, when we look at this family, however, and we look at the dates, suddenly we begin to realize that these dates coincide with what was going on in Mexico at the time. Remember that Father Hidalgo in 1810 declares Mexican independence, and by 1811 we have all sorts of problems in San Antonio. Now certainly they were far enough away when they were down on the Nueces, and then later when they moved to the Aransas River Ranch, the family is now looking at some major uh, intrusions into their area. Certainly we find that Gutierrez de Lara and Augustus McGee begin to attack and steal the cattle from the ranches of the people in the area. And that's when we believe that Patricia de la Garza decides it's time to go back to Soto la Marina. And when the wife says, sweetie, it's time to go, Martin de Leon is going to say, yes, ma'am. And so sure enough, the other children then are going to be born in Soto la Marina. And luckily they were gone from the area when General Arredondo arrives and we have the Battle of Medina. Had it not been for that, it's possible that Martin de Leon might have been caught up in the problems and the devastation of the Battle of Medina in which thousands, thousands of the uh, revolutionaries, the people who were in revolt against the Spanish crown were killed. And so finally, by 1815, after Arredondo is gone, Patricia brings, insists that Martin and she bring the children back to Texas. And so by 1818, Francisca, the last of the children, is born in Texas. Now, when we look at Mexican independence, we have to remember that this is going to very much affect the families that are in Texas at this time. In 1820, what we have is that the liberal revolt in Spain is going to cause the conservatives in Mexico City and central Mexico to decide that they are going to support separation from Spain, something that would not have happened had there not been problems in Spain. And so in this case, by 1821, Mexico finally does gain its independence by the uni unification of both the centralists and the federalists. Now, Agustin de Iturbide, of course, is a centralist, and he is going to remain in power from 1821 until 1824. It was actually Iturbide who invites the first of the impresario colonists. In this case, of course, it is Stephen F. Austin. His father, Moses Austin, had come originally and had contracted for an impresario grant. And when we look at what an empresario was, we have to remember that he was not in actual ownership of all of these thousands and thousands of acres that extended from the Colorado River to the Brazos, because this is the area that Moses, that Moses Austin was originally given and that he passes on to his son Stephen. But what Stephen is expected to do is to bring settlers, just like Jose de Escandon did. He was expected to bring settlers, and the settlers were each to be given 
if they had a family, 4,428 acres plus 177 acres. And when you consider the fact that acreage was selling in the United States for a dollar and a quarter an acre, can you imagine what 4,000 acres would have cost you? And in this case, if you came to Stephen Austin's colony, all you had to do was pay the cost of the paperwork, which could be from as little as $12 to maybe as much as $100. And so you could get nearly 5,000 acres. The only thing you had to do was to swear allegiance to the Mexican government. And you also had to promise to be of good character and to be a Catholic.